Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm instructor Jim Pytel and today's topic of discussion is single phasing. Our objective is to examine the electrical and mechanical properties of Y and delta configured three phase AC motors experiencing the loss of a single phase. This lecture operates under the presumption the user is skilled in three phase AC circuit analysis and has a working knowledge of induction motors. This lecture additionally presumes the viewer has a basic understanding of motor control and motor protection elements, specifically overload relays. If you lack the requisite skill set, by all means, check out the supporting lectures at the Big Bad Tech channel and bring yourself up to speed. As you are no doubt aware, a balanced three-phase AC system is characterized by three voltage phases of equal magnitude with a 120 degree relative shift between them and a wire delta configured load with three identical impedances. Balanced three-phase AC systems experience predictable relationships between line and load current and line to line and load voltages. The predictability of these relationships allows us to take time-saving shortcuts such as the single wattmeter method when calculating electrical properties like current and power. This is not true in an unbalanced system. As we learned in the previous lectures on unbalanced three-phase AC circuit analysis, one reason systems experience imbalance is because one or more of the impedances composing the Y or delta configuration is not equal in magnitude and or angle with remaining elements. Another source of imbalance in three-phase AC systems is the phase voltages themselves. Any change in magnitude and or relative phase shift between any one or all three of the phases will also affect the balanced state of the system. In the worst case scenario, the complete loss of a single phase in a three-phase AC system dramatically changes the electrical properties of that system. Loss of a single phase in a three-phase AC system is referred to as single phasing. This is a bit of a misnomer because the system still experiences two phases and might more appropriately be called biphasing. As incorrect as the title single phasing may be, it is still not as incorrect as the titles Democratic Republic of the Congo or Fox News. Regardless, loss of a single phase completely upsets the balanced state we might otherwise expect, even if the impedances remain identical. Loss of a single phase might occur for several reasons, the simplest being a broken or missed connection. Three-phase AC motors necessitate at minimum three connections. If someone came by and yanked one out, the system would understandably experience an imbalance. Single phasing can also occur because of a faulted protection element. Consider a fuse holder in a three-phase AC system where one fuse blows early and the other two remain intact. As with the broken connection, the system would understandably experience an imbalance. Before we dive into electrical theory of single phasing, allow me to conduct a brief overview of motors and their response to different types of single phasing events. As general guidance, motors experiencing a single phase event might not only draw excessive current in the remaining phases, they might also not operate as intended. We can divide single phasing events into three different categories. One, unloaded motors single phased while in the act of rotating. Two, loaded motors single phased while in the act of rotating. And finally, three, motor single phase at rest or at locked rotor conditions. Each scenario ordinarily presents identifiable and predictable results. Ordinarily, an unloaded motor single phase while in the act of rotating will continue to run. However, it will run at a reduced speed and draw excessive current in the remaining phases. Obviously, no current will be drawn in the lost phase. Additionally, the motor will produce an ugly growling or crackling sound while in operation. Given current in the remaining phases increases, Overload elements may eventually signal an overload, although it may take some time to do so. Lacking overload protection, this motor might eventually damage itself over time. Let's skip to the opposite extreme. In contrast, a motor single phased at rest might not even start rotating because the loss of a single phase in a three phase AC system means the rotating magnetic field produced by the stator is not properly established. Given motors at rest are known to experience a large surge of current known as inrush, with a rotor locked in place, current drawn by the remaining phases will be many times rated current. This motor will quickly enter an overload condition. Lacking overload protection, this motor will rapidly damage or destroy itself. The remaining scenario, loaded motors single phased while in the act of rotating, can be a mix of both worlds. Ordinarily, a motor experiencing at or above the rated torque when single phased can be expected to choke and stall and eventually come to rest, eventually experiencing the same fate as a motor single phased at standstill, i.e. tremendous current draw in the remaining phases in a quick overload. As previously, lacking overload protection, this motor would quickly damage or destroy itself. If, however, the motor was experiencing oppositional torque below the rated torque when single phased, we might expect it to continue to run, although at a reduced speed and increased current in the remaining phases. While running, the motor will produce an ugly growling or crackling sound. Given current in the remaining phases increases, overload elements may signal an overload condition 
quicker than if the motor was unloaded. Lacking overload protection, this motor might eventually damage itself over time. You'll note in each of these scenarios, a single phase motor draws no current in the lost phase and more current in the remaining phases. An extremely simple means of troubleshooting a motor suspected of experiencing a single phase event is to take three current readings using an amp clamp. Current drawn in the remaining phases will be high. Current in the lost phase will be non-existent. Lock it out, tag it out, and fix the problem. Here's an example of a lightly loaded third horsepower motor. We use a clamp on ammeter to measure current in normal operation, and again, while being single phased. In normal operation, when energized, the motor experiences a brief surge of inrush, and current stabilizes at 0.9 amps, or 900 milliampers. This motor's rated current is 1.6 amps. In the lightly loaded condition, you'll note the motor draws much less than the rated 1.6 amps and sounds like a regular motor. While in operation, when I remove one phase, in this case L3, note the motor continues to run. Current in line 3 drops to 0 amps, and current in the remaining phases rises to 1.4 amps. Additionally, the motor starts making an angry growl, indicative of a loss of phase. Given the lightly loaded state, the overload element currently set at 1.6 amps will not signal an overload condition. If however this motor was fully loaded at the time of the single phasing event, we might expect it to choke or stall. Something extremely interesting can be observed while the motor is being single phased while running. This motor is intended to operate using a light industrial 120 volt line to neutral, 208 volt line to line 60 hertz 3 phase AC. In a Y configuration, one would ordinarily expect each winding to experience the full 120 volt line to neutral voltage. This is most assuredly not true for three wire Y configurations in the unbalanced state. A voltmeter measuring the voltage across winding one demonstrates winding one experiences 118.7 volts. Similarly, a voltmeter measuring voltage across winding two demonstrates winding two experiences a 109.7 volt differential. Voltage magnitude nor phase shift is no longer apportioned equally between these two remaining windings while the motor is being single phased in operation. Here's an additional rather surprising observation. What's the voltage across the third winding, i.e. the winding that's lost connection phase L3? If you said zero volts, you're wrong. A voltmeter measuring the voltage across winding three demonstrates winding three experiences an 89 volt differential. What is going on here? Here's a hint. What types of interactions occur between movement, magnetism, and electricity in a spinning motor? If you think you know, Write your answer on the back of a $20 bill and send it to me. I'll explain the source of this odd rating in a moment. Let's now try to single phase this motor from a stop state. Do not try this at home. When energized with only phase L1 and L2, the motor experiences a surge of inrush current in the remaining phases and fails to initiate rotation. Current in the lost phase is non-existent and current in the remaining phases is a substantial 6.8 amps. Additionally, the motor buzzes like a hive of angry bees. Something is obviously wrong here and no good can come of this. Given the heavily loaded state of the overload element, presently set at 1.6 amps, it quickly signals an overload and the motor starter breaks connection by opening the contacts. All right, now that we've got a general idea of what to expect during single phasing events, let's now examine the electrical theory behind single phasing by way of some illustrated examples. Fair warning, the remaining sections presume the viewer is skilled in three phase AC circuit analysis and only the strongest, smartest, and sexiest of aspiring technicians are permitted beyond this point. Assuming you're still with me, let us begin by examining why configured motors in normal operation, and again while being single phased. We'll do the same thing for delta configured motors, and then call it a day. The state of a three phase AC motor is a classic example of a balanced load. Consider an unloaded Y configured motor designed to operate using a light industrial three phase AC characterized by a 120 volt line to neutral and 208 volt line to line 60 hertz AC. Balanced Y configurations experience the lower line to neutral voltage. Because this system is balanced, it does not necessitate a fourth neutral wire. In the unloaded condition, the motor is known to rotate at let's say 1780 RPM and produce no torque. This is an occasion of zero watts of mechanical power output. Let's say at this rotational speed, each winding has a defined impedance and experiences 70 volts of counter electromotive force in opposition to applied voltage. Accounting for the defined impedance value and counter electromotive force, Let's say each winding draws roughly 715 milliampers of current, lagging each phase by a relative 70 degrees. Note in this balanced system, current through each winding is equal in magnitude and phase shifted by a relative 120 degrees from each other. This is what we would expect to experience with the motor in the unloaded condition during normal operation. 
the system changes state in the loaded condition. Consider the same motor in the loaded condition, known to rotate at a reduced speed of 1710 RPM and produce a usable amount of torque. Let's say at this rotational speed, each winding has a defined impedance and experiences a reduced mount of 67 volts of counter electromotive force in opposition to applied voltage. Accounting for the defined impedance value and reduced counter electromotive force, let's say each winding draws roughly one amp of current lagging each phase by a relative 45 degrees. As previously, note in the balanced loaded condition, current through each winding is equal in magnitude and phase shifted by a relative 120 degrees from each other. You'll note in the loaded condition, more current is being drawn by the motor windings and power factor is increased because more real power is being consumed by the motor. Additionally, you know because the motor slows down in the loaded condition, each winding experiences less counter electromotive force. All of these factors result in more current in the loaded condition. Let's use these figures during normal operation as the basis of comparison for single phasing events. Consider an unloaded Y configured motor single phase while running by the unexpected loss or disconnection of phase L3. While being single phase, the motor emits a growling sound and speed drops from the ordinary no load speed of 1780 RPM down to 1750 RPM. At the reduced rotational speed of 1750 RPM, Let's say each winding now experiences only 69 volts of counter electromotive force. We might expect the reduction of this counter electromotive force component, in addition to the unbalancing effects of a single phasing event, to profoundly influence the electrical properties of this system. Current in line 3, the lost phase, is understandably 0 amps. This being said, two branches of the Y configuration remain connected, and a single path for current exists through the series combination of windings 1 and 2. You'd think winding 1 and 2 would divide the line-to-line -line differential between L1 and L2 evenly, but while the unbalanced motor is still running, they don't. Let's say winding 1 experiences 107 volts at an angle of 10 degrees and draws 1.1 amps of current at an angle of negative 30 degrees. Similarly, let's say winding 2 experiences 114 volts at an angle of negative 130 degrees and draws 1.1 amps at an angle of 150 degrees. Although no current travels through winding 3, it still experiences 69 volts of counter electromotive force, similar to winding 1 and winding 2, while the motor is still running. This is the effect we observed in the earlier hands on demonstration. Although there was a loss of connection to phase L3, winding 3 still experienced counter electromotive force, just like all the other windings while the motor is in operation. Keep in mind, the unloaded motor presently being single phased isn't actually doing anything, it's still unloaded. Any real power consumed by this motor is a loss and a majority of these losses are directed towards damage. Note current in the remaining phases is not only larger when in the balanced unloaded condition, it's also larger than it was in the balanced loaded condition. If this motor was serviced by an overload relay set at the rated current of 1 amp, it would take quite some time for it to signal an overload condition. Lacking overload protection, the remaining windings might eventually experience premature failure. Long story short, this is not how you want to operate this motor. Further interesting observations can be made. Although voltage is apportioned unequally between the remaining windings, you note the series combination of remaining windings 1 and 2 still experience the full line-to-line -line differential between L1 and L2. As proof of this fact, 107 volts at an angle of 10 degrees minus 114 volts at an angle of negative 130 degrees does indeed equal roughly 208 volts at an angle of 30 degrees, i.e. the line-to-line -line differential between L1 and L2 for 120 volt line-to-neutral 208 volt line to line 60 hertz three phase AC system with a line to neutral voltage assumed to be the reference. Additionally, you will note that I1 and I2 are equal in magnitude yet perfectly out of phase with one another. 180 degrees separates 1.1 amps at an angle of negative 30 degrees and 1.1 amps at an angle of 150 degrees. Why is this true? I'll tell you why. Current through elements in series is the same. This is where it's helpful to remind ourselves that phasers are shorthand representations of sinusoidal quantities. I1 is defined as traveling from L1 to the central Y connection. Similarly, I2 is defined as traveling from L2 to the central Y connection. 1.1 amps at an angle of negative 30 degrees traveling in this direction is the exact same thing as 1.1 amps at an angle of 150 degrees traveling in this direction. When 1.1 amps enters winding one, 1.1 amps happens to be leaving winding 2 and vice versa. Current through elements in series is the same. There is one path for current through the remaining two windings in a Y configured motor experiencing a single phasing event. 
This is often why you'll observe Y-configured motors having suffered a lengthy single-phasing event with two sets of burned or damaged windings, and one winding, the one not connected, undamaged. The same cannot be said for delta-configured motors, as I'll soon demonstrate. Let's now examine the electrical theory behind a single-phasing event at standstill for a Y-configured motor. This is where things get really bad. Consider a Y-configured motor at standstill, being energized by only two phases in a three-phase AC system. Phase L1 and L2 show up on time, phase L3 is disconnected. Upon closure of the motor starter, the motor would emit an angry buzz and refuse to budge. In the locked rotor condition, i.e. an occasion in which rotational speed equals zero RPM, each winding experiences zero volts of counter-electromotive force in opposition to applied voltage. Given no oppositional voltage, current will undoubtedly be extremely high for this motor single phase to stand still. Current on line three is understandably zero amps, However, a single path where current still exists through the series combination of windings 1 and 2. At rest, winding 1 and 2 will divide the line-to-line -line differential between L1 and L2 evenly. Let's say winding 1 experiences 104 volts at an angle of 30 degrees and draws 6 amps at an angle of negative 15 degrees. Similarly, let's say winding 2 experiences 104 volts at an angle of negative 150 degrees and draws 6 amps at an angle of 165 degrees. You know, lacking the moderating influence of counter-electromotive force, the remaining windings experience full applied voltage and draw extremely large amounts of current. Any real power consumed by this motor would be directed towards self-damage. This is not a scenario you want to maintain for any length of time. If this motor was serviced by an overload relay set at the rate of current of 1 amp, it would quickly signal an overload condition and open the primary contacts to break the circuit. Lacking overload protection, the remaining windings would be quickly be damaged or destroyed. This is most assuredly not how you want to operate this motor. You will again note that the series combination of remaining windings 1 and 2 still experience the full line-to-line -line differential between L1 and L2. As proof of this fact, 104 volts at an angle of 30 degrees minus 104 volts at an angle of negative 150 degrees does indeed equal 208 volts at an angle of 30 degrees, i.e. the line-to-line -line differential between L1 and L2 for a 120 volt line-to-neutral, 208 volt line-to-line, 60 hertz, three-phase AC system. Additionally, you will again note I1 and I2 are equal in magnitude, yet perfectly out of phase with one another because current through elements in series is the same. 6 amps at an angle of negative 15 degrees, traveling in this direction, is the exact same thing as 6 amps at an angle of 165 degrees, traveling in this direction. When 6 amps enters winding 1, 6 amps happens to be leaving winding 2, and vice versa. Finally, you'll again note that while being single phased at standstill, Y-configured motors experience high current in the remaining two windings and none in the third. This is often why you'll observe Y-configured motors having suffered a lengthy single-phasing event with two sets of burned or damaged windings and one winding, the one not connected, undamaged. The same cannot be said for delta-configured motors, as I will soon demonstrate. 